before we start, I would like to just speak to Dad real quick. So if we could just close our eyes, bow our heads. Dad, thank you so much for a beautiful opportunity that you've given me once again just to kind of speak hope, speak life, speak faith, speak joy, speak every good and perfect thing that comes from you. I pray, Lord, that you will anoint my lips this morning, Father. Your favor will be upon each and every one of us, including myself, who will be able, who will be speaking your word this morning. I pray, Lord, Holy Spirit, I want you to take complete control over this morning. Push me out the way. Do what you have to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Somebody help me nice and strong. Say light. So, so you saw the story of Joseph on the screen a couple of minutes ago. And the story of Joseph is a lot longer than that. But you can imagine if I had to put the whole story on, it would last us probably 45 minutes. I had it while I was editing it, 45 minutes. And I had to just kind of cut it and compress it just to give the, the idea of what I'm trying to say this morning. And it's interesting to note when you look at the story of Joseph, right? If you just go one, one generation just back from Joseph, right? You get a guy called Jacob. And Jacob. We, I don't know if you know the story of Jacob. He went to work seven years for this woman uh, called Rachel, and his, and his master betrayed him, and he gave him the wrong chick, Leah. I don't know how many of you remember that story. Just wave your hand if you know that story. He worked seven years for Rachel, and he got Leah, and then he went back to this guy Laban, and he's like, dude, you cheated me. I need, you know, I need my wife. Can you give me back uh, you know, my, the woman that I've been working for? Laban says, okay, push another seven years. I'll finally give you Rachel. But the Bible says wherever Jacob went, Jacob the same guy that wrestled with God. How many remember he wrestled with God and God touched his hip and he broke his hip? And but he said, I'm not leaving until I get my blessing. Somebody said, I'm not leaving until I get my blessing. Because that's what happened. So, so Jacob comes into the house of Laban. And what happens to Jacob, the Bible says the same thing that happened to Joseph. It's so ironic that it kind of just flows into the next generation. How many of you know that, the, that, that God says it will be better with your children and your children's children? You see, my dad did well, but I'm supposed to do better than what he did. And then my daughter, my son, whoever uh, my kids are going to be after, well, they have to do better than what I'm doing, right? Because that's how the generational blessing has to keep flowing. And so Jacob, the Bible says there, and there there was favor over the household of Laban because Jacob was there. So how many of you know wherever you go, God gives you favor? We just watched a nice testimony. Wherever you go, it doesn't matter where you find yourself, God gives you favor. And just in the next, in the next uh, generation, we find this guy called Joseph. Same thing happens to him. Just to kind of recap what happened in the story, and then I'm going to get into my story real quick. Same thing happens to Joseph. And how many of you know that when God has a strong calling on your life, you're going to have to go through some hard times? How many of you know that when God has a strong calling on your life, you're going to have to go through some tough times? You're going to have to face some things that you didn't want to face. You're going to ask God for something, and he's going to give it to you, and he promises you God is not a man that he should lie. He'll give you what you asked him for, but at the same time, he's going to first going to take you through a little bit of a test. He's going to take you through a little bit of a trial. He's going to take you through a little bit of a tough time before he gives you what you want. I remember growing up, uh, I, I used to want to drive the car all the time. I, I'm a car fanatic, right? And then my father says, you can go around the block after you wash the car, right? There was always an incentive. Dad, can I have some money? First clean the yard, I'll give you some money. Dad, can I, can I, have, can I go with my friends here? Yeah, first finish the dishes. First do something. And that's kind of how God works. He'll first allow you to go through something. He'll first allow you to go through a little bit of a trial. It will first allow you to kind of test your faith and strengthen your muscle before he gets you to a point where he just, he doesn't ever just hand it to you. That would be an irresponsible parent. God will never just give you stuff, right? Are you guys still with me this morning, yeah? And so the same thing happens to Joseph, right? And Joseph gets this dream. It's this amazing dream that God is going to allow his brothers and even his parents to bow before him. But you know how it is that when you get excited about where God is about to take you, you get so fired up and that you sometimes get too excited and you just go and blurt it out to everybody, right? And so, so Joseph comes in. He's like, yo, guys, you should see I had this dream, man, and everything. You guys were bowing before me, and, and my sheaves of grain were standing up straight, and yours was bowing before me. And, and, and his brothers kind of get jealous because his brothers already are jealous towards him because is his father's favorite. Remember, his father made him that nice robe, and his father was kind of he was kind of his dad's favorite. So his brothers are already jealous towards him. And so he gets another dream the next night that his star was the brightest, and the other stars were bowing before him. And so what happens is his brothers, they become a little bit anxious. They become a bit upset. And they say, here comes the dreamer. We read it in the, in the, in the thing here. And they say, here comes the dreamer. Here comes this guy that thinks he knows everything. Here comes this guy 
guy that is so excited. How many of that, it, that happened to you when you first got saved and you first encountered the love of Jesus and you first had that encounter, that Holy Spirit encounter and God showed you things and he opened up things before you and he's like, I want to take you here. I want to do this with you. I want to do that with you, man. You're going to speak in front of nations. You're going to do that. That happened to me five years ago. God showed me what he wants to do with, with my ministry and where he wants to take me. But how many of you know, just as, as much as your fire is burning, just as much as you're so excited with what God's doing for you, here stands Satan with a big bucket of water waiting just to throw it all over your fire just so you can be washed out. And Satan's standing there and he's just waiting to wash him out. So Joseph comes, his father sends him to the field. Go check on your brothers, go check what they're doing. You give them something to eat. And he comes out there and his brothers are busy doing their thing there. And his brother says, here comes this dreamer. Jealousy. I mean, have you ever experienced that? A lot of times the people who hurt you are the people who are closest to you. The people you thought you could rely on. The people you thought will have your back in times of danger. The people you thought, Jesus, these are my brothers. They got me, man. We can do this. They, they got my back. Let's do this. But sometimes people close to you, the reason why the people closest to you hurts the most is precisely because they are close to you. If it was somebody you didn't know, somebody wherever it is, it wouldn't bother you that much. You know that you walk into a place and somebody makes a comment that you don't know and they, they don't even bother you. It just kind of washes off like, like water off a duck's back. But when somebody says something that's your cousin or you come to a family event and somebody makes a comment about your nose or about your shoes or about your hairstyle or whatever, you can go and sit in the car the rest of that whole gathering because you were touched because somebody close to you actually hurt you. Somebody help me say light. How many of you believe this morning that God wants you to be his light? Oh, come on, somebody. How many of you believe that God wants you to be his light? He wants to take you places. He wants to do some amazing things with you. But first, you got to go through some tough times. Allow me to share my story with you real quick. Many of you know that last two years ago, almost basically two years ago, my wife and myself, we got married. We're going for two years now. And we got married and... and Remember, I was, I was kind of the bachelor. I was the guy that had it all going on. You know, I had my car, and I, had, and I, and I was working, so I had money and whatever. And so when we got married, um, and my wife moved to South Africa, she's from Namibia, and she moved to South Africa, it was a bit more tougher than we thought because it was, we, we were having a bit of a tough time to get her visa sorted out, uh, uh, not a visa, her passport and her ID. So you can imagine when we were trying to get job, a job for her, it was difficult because she didn't have her ID, she didn't have a South African ID number and whatever. So that's the first thing they ask in the CV, oh, can I see your South African ID number? And so we got married and she moved in. And so as a result, as I was the, the only breadwinner in the home, right? And so moving from the guy that, that kind of had it going on now, I had to kind of sustain a family. Are you guys with me this morning? Yeah? I had to sustain a family. And so then my daughter came, and I, I don't know if you know, man, that, that this, this milk, these things are expensive, man. I, th- I thought like I thought like 100 rand will be okay. This thing is like going for 400 rand for a little like ton of milk. It's like, what the heck, dude? Like, can't we just use normal milk? Can't you drink what we drink? And unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. And so then we get this, um, the, the nappies. And guys, listen, man, I don't know. If you just want to go out there and get a baby, it's, it's not as easy as it looks, man. It's tough. And uh, so you need to buy nappies, and it becomes difficult. And, and so as my wife and I, we, we started living together after we got married and, and we, had, we had our daughter, it became increasingly difficult to cope. Now, remember, God gave me this vision when uh, five years ago, what he wants to do in my ministry, where he wants to take me. And he told me, you're going to travel and you're going to do some amazing stuff for me. But you see, this is not where I am yet, right? I'm still kind of busy building towards my, my palace experience. And so, and so as we were going through these hardships and through this, this time where I had to be the sole breadwinner, family, I don't know how many of you can, 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 can kind of testify with me, right? And so, so we have the house, and you know that you need to pay the house. I don't know if you're renting or if you actually bought the house, but there's something called bond. How many of you can relate with that one? And, uh, and so this bond, what happens is every month your salary comes in, right, on the 30th, and you get this message on your phone, and it goes to bling. Yeah. And as soon as you get that message... You see this nice number on your phone, and you're like, yes, okay, so I'm going to do this, 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 and that. Then the next day, you get another message, and five, six thousand, seven thousand 7,000 rand gets deducted off your account. And then, 
You come in home, you went to work like you drive home, and, and, and all of a sudden you check your post box, and then you find this nice letter from the city of Johannesburg. How many of you remember? How many of you know that letter? It's a love letter. It comes with orange. When you open it, it's orange, and there's a whole bunch of numbers on it, and some sentences, and it looks real cool. But when you open it, you get the shock of your life. When you look on the right bottom corner of that love letter, you find out just how much you need to give away. And then you got to give it to them, right? And then, having my daughter, we couldn't just, you know, go do the, the whole uh, 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 giving birth and all that. We needed medical aid, right? So now, on a certain day during the month, they ask you, so when would you want the deduction to go? Then you get another message. And then the medical aid gets deducted, right? Then you get another message. Then the car gets deducted, right? Then you get another message. Then the insurance gets deducted, right? And so by the time you come to church and we busy preaching about, come on, God's going to come through for you. God's going to do something with you. You're thinking, yo, I don't even have offering. What are you talking about? Oh, my man, I, I can show you all the messages on my phone, dude. What I started with and where I am three days later is not the same thing. That's why you find people in the beginning of the month, yo, they fire up, the malls are full. And then, yeah, the second week, it's like, yo, I tell Anka, let's go shopping the second week when everyone's broke. Because nobody has money left. And so as time continued, man, um, it's exactly what happened to me. And by the time the Sunday morning comes, obviously I need to give my tithe. So family, what happens is after I give my tithe, there's not much left to even buy groceries, right? So it's one of those like, okay, now we must budget now, right? So you know how it is, and you, and you grab your trolley, and I don't want to take the big trolley now, because, you know, the big trolley takes too much stuff. Let's take that small one with the three baskets in, and let's just kind of throw what we need. And so we're pushing, and Anka's like, baby, we need this. No, we don't need that right now. What we do need is bread and milk. Let's just grab that, and let's go down here. Baby, come, let's put the steak in here. No, 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 we don't need bologna. all right. Let's have bologna. And then, baby, let's go. No, 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 no. Just put the bread, the milk, the bologna. We'll eat that. It's all right. We'll see how. And then, and then on a Sunday afternoon, when we get from church, and we're driving back home. I said, Mom, what did you cook? Uh, you know, we want to come for over for lunch. Why? Because there's nothing to eat at home. And so we go over to my parents' house to have this nice big lunch and go back home. The point that I'm trying to make is that sometimes you have to kind of go through that put experience. Family, where I am now is not where I'm going to be somewhere down the line. The way I'm hustling now is not going to continue for the rest of my life. That's something we need to understand early. That we need to get down packed early. And when we get this tie thing right, and when we lock it down in our mind, this is non-negotiable. This thing needs to come to God's house. That's finished. When we get that thing right, we understand that this is what it is. This is where we're going. And so, <clears throat> the other day, things were getting a bit tough for me, right? Uh, it was really getting tough. Like, tough, tough. I don't know how many of you have ever be been in that position where you feel like just breaking down. You, you probably just, you just get emotional for no reason. You just almost start crying. Because you're not sure, hey, how am I going to pay this, you know? And then, and then maybe you skip the, the water and lights payment and then it piles up. And then you're thinking, yo, 20000 that's not more than my salary. How am I going to pay this? And the next month is 25000 It's just like, brrr, and things are just happening. And I got to that point in my life. And family, this was about just last month, maybe four or five weeks ago. And so I'm in that point in my life, and, and it's taking a toll on me personally. It's taking a toll on my health. It's taking a toll on my relationship with my wife, because now you know it is. Come on, if I have some real people in the building, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And now you know it is. Now we start arguing for stupid things. Baby, I told you not to buy that. Leave that. Yeah, that's why the money's finished. And now we're fighting over money issues and whatever. And, and I'm getting to the point that I'm speaking real this morning, because I know this. You know what I'm talking about, right? And I'm getting to the point where I'm just like, Oh, I feel like just, I don't know how many of you ever had this feeling like I wish I could just fly away and then just pff, go to heaven or something. Yo, bro, this is tough. It's getting difficult. I don't know what to do next. I don't have money. The account is empty. Those people are phoning for this and I need to, everything is just going crazy. I don't know where to go now. And I'm in this position in my life a couple of months ago and I, and I say to, I say to Anka, baby, is it okay if I take like a sabbatical, if I like, go somewhere for a while and just kind of detox my mind a little bit. And she says, no, it's fine. So I can't go away for long because I can't be away from my wife and my child alone at home. So I'm thinking, okay, let me, and plus Friday night is factory, Sunday morning's church. I'm thinking, okay, let me do one of those moves where I just kind of go 
Friday late night or Saturday early morning. And my favorite place to unwind is the Kruger National Park. I don't know how many of you have ever been to the Kruger National Park. It's just so, like, so chilled for me. It's just so serene. It's just like so, you hear the birds and you hear the animals and you hear... Nate was laughing and Nate and Lebo was laughing. I'm like, dude, when I relax, I just go to the Kruger National Park. I park my car somewhere off-road and I just sit there and look at the animals. And so this is a picture of exactly what I, what I did that night. And I told, I told Anka, baby, I'm, going to, I'm driving to Nelspret. I'm going to the Kruger and I'm just going to go and kind of just unwind, just kind of breathe, allow my mind just to just unwind. Are you guys still with me this morning, yeah? yeah? And so I go to the Kruger National Park, and I borrow a tent from my father, and look, check this out. I get there, I find my spot, and I'm busy setting up my tent alone. Eh? So I push the poles, like it's that easy one with those poles that bend like that, and you just kind of click them in with elastic. And so I just undo them, and I push the tent in on the side. And the people are looking at me like, what the heck, this guy is camping alone. And wait, when I come in the front there, and I pay, and whatever, and the booking is sorted out, and he's like, so how many people? I'm like, one. That was like, eh, one. <laughs> I'm like, yes, but I'm alone. He's like, alone? Ah, my friend. I'm like, you don't understand bro, what's going on at home, and I'm just trying to relax. Of course, I'm not explaining this whole story to this guy. He doesn't need to know my personal life. And so I pay and do whatever, and I come in there, and I'm busy pitching my tent. I'm on my own there. My tent is up, and I drive to the little shop there. I buy myself that, you know that kettle, that old school one you put on, on the fire. And I buy myself this beer car. How many of you grew up with those beer cars? <laughs> you know those, those Easter beer cars, no? So I buy myself one of that, buy me some wood. I call fire nature's TV, right? And I put the fire on and I just sit there and watch the fire and hear the wood crackling and just kind of relaxing my mind a little bit and just kind of getting my mind off factory and work and bills and all the scooters and just trying to break. So I'm sitting there and, I, and I'm making my fire. And the next day, because I only slept there for one night, so the next day I pack everything up, throw it in my car. And I'm driving back to Joburg, right? And so, as I'm driving back to Joburg, I'm driving there through the mountains of Nelspruit and Pumalanga. I'm up the mountain, down the mountain, and it's one lane and two lanes, and then there's five trucks in front of you, and this whole thing anyway. I'm supposed to be coming, meeting my drama team here at church so we can go watch some drama. So I'm kind of rushing a little bit to get back home. So I'm rushing, brrr, I'm driving, driving, and I passing the trucks and doing my whole thing. So I passed that first toll gate about 100, 100 kilometers out of Nelspruit. And as I passed that first toll gate, I come up. And just at that very moment, my father calls me, right? And he's like, how far are you? I'm, I'm like, no, I'm just, I'm just, in fact, my wife called me and my, she was with my dad. So they're like saying, how far are you? What's happening? I'm like, no, I'm, I'm busy driving about 100 kilometers away from I'm about 250 kilometers away from home, right? And so as I'm driving up, all of a sudden, fam, listen, all of a sudden, I hear my car start to go. I'm on the phone with my father, right? So I hear my car. I'm thinking, oh gosh, what now? And so I'm just trying to pass this one truck, and I'm accelerating, but it's not going anywhere, and I change down. To second and I'm like, uh, 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 and I put it into first and it's like, uh, 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 off. And I'm in the middle of the road, I'm alone in the car, it's on a national highway, I'm 250 k's away from Joburg and I'm stuck. So I try and start it, there it starts. And I pull off the side, off. So I phone my father, I'm like, I don't know what's going on with this car. It's stuck here, it's broken. So at this point in my life, I'm on this, I'm on this, in the car, and I'm getting, to say it straight, I'm getting duck of God and Jesus and the devil and everything. Because now I'm saying, kind of like, Kind of like, you know, check, this was a selfie because the drama team's busy sending messages. How six, how far you want to leave? And I send them current, st current situation. I'm stuck on the side of the road. My car doesn't want to go anywhere. And at this point, I'm getting upset with God. I'm getting upset with everything because now I'm feeling kind of like, kind of like, kind of like the, the, way, the way David said it here under where he starts speaking to God. 
and he's asking God, now, dude, what the heck is going on? How many of you ever had that Job thing happen to you where, where things are just all of a sudden, everything go wrong at the same time? It's like, I mean, God, come on, bro, are you serious now? Okay. Bro, I, I don't know how you speak to God. I call him dead because it's my father, right? And so I'm sitting in this car. I'm waiting two and a half hours because I have to phone my father. There's no one else. Pretty is this side. 250 k's to Joburg, this side. I'm stuck here in the middle of somewhere, nowhere. And so I phone my father. I'm like, there. I'm stuck here. This thing doesn't want to go. Try and start it again. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Doesn't want to start. And, and I'm getting upset to the point I feel like I can take something and break the window and, and, I'm, and I'm getting upset. I don't know how many of you have ever had that Job experience where you get upset with God and you start asking God, but God, what the heck is going on, man? I'm doing your work. I'm fighting your battle. I'm in church every Sunday. I'm giving my tithes. I'm doing what you require from me. I pray like a, like a good Christian should be praying. I'm doing everything you're asking from me. And I get into the car and I close the door and I start screaming to God and I'm like, God, Come on, bro. What the heck is going on? I'm stuck. I'm stuck between somewhere and nowhere. The money is no money at home. The car is broken. What's going on here, bro? I'm, are you even hearing this prayer? Is it even worth it to pray to you? I don't know if I'm speaking to real people that they had this experience before where you are. That's why I gave you my personal story because I want you to understand this is reality. It happens to the best of us. And I'm there with God. I'm like, hey, bro, you have time for games, bro. Seriously. Seriously, I'm pushing. If I ask God, why me? Why, 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 why me? After everything I've done, after all I've done for church, God, I'm in church every Sunday. I give my offerings. I give my time. I do what I'm supposed to do. What else do you want from what else? Why me? Are you even being real right now? Are you even there? Are you even listening to me? I thought you loved me. I thought you cared for me. I thought, I thought you, I thought you my God. I thought you my father. I thought you're going to look after me. I thought, I thought, I thought, but where the heck are you, bro? Because I'm struggling and I'm on my own and there's nobody coming to knock on my door and say, hey, bro, here's a hundred thousand. Go enjoy. Go fix your car. Go sort out your bills. Here's life. Gonna so much. Everything's gonna work. There's none of that happening and I don't expect it to happen either. But I'm asking, why must I struggle so long, dude? When are you gonna make a plan? When are you gonna do something? And when is something gonna open? You say, I trust me, therefore, see if you open the floodgates of heaven. I'm trusting you, trusting you. When are you gonna open the floodgates of heaven? Because I'm struggling and it's taking long and you're not coming through. Dude, you need to come through when are you going to do this for me? I'm speaking real stuff. Real things. If, if it doesn't happen to you, glory, hallelujah, amen. God came through for you. That's good for you, but it's happening to me. And we see testimonies every week of God doing this for people. And now when I come here, that's why we play these testimonies, to show you. Okay, you're there now. You hear where I'm speaking about now. But you can get there. See, Joseph comes and he's going through his life and people who he thought was going to love him betrays him, throws him in a pit. As they throw him in a pit, uh, they say, okay, here comes another, here comes another carriage, uh, caravan of people. They sell him into slavery and, and Joseph gets sold into slavery and as he goes, he gets into Pharaoh's house yeah, and he comes to Potiphar and he comes there and, and, and all of a sudden, favor just follows him wherever he goes. So guess what happens? His wife, right, um, the, the, the king's wife kind of betrays uh, Joseph and says, okay, he was trying to Cheat, uh, cheat you. He was trying to sleep with me. He, and she grabs a piece of his cloak. I'm just kind of paraphrasing the story. He grabs, she grabs a piece of his cloak and she shows the king, look, he tried to sleep with me. He's trying to, he's trying to betray you. And the king says to him, okay, dude, because you did that, you're trying to sleep with my wife. I'm throwing you in prison. Oh, but the Bible said when he came into prison, he turned that prison into a, pra a place of worship. When he came into prison, he said, okay, I know I'm not in the best situation right now, dude, but I'm going to turn this place into a place of praise. I'm going to turn it into a place of worship. And according to the word of God, they were having praise and worship sessions in the, in the prison. They were turning up in the prison. And the people were like, wherever this guy goes, man, he's like he shines this big light all over his face. Wherever he goes, things just work out for him. Wherever he goes, things just make sense for him. And I'm here to tell you this morning, I'm not speaking from a position where things are working out for me. I'm not speaking down on you saying, don't worry, things are going to work out. Look what God did for me. I'm still where you are. I'm still trusting. I'm still throwing my miracle offering. I'm still putting tithes every week. I'm still waiting for God to do something. So I'm not saying, I oh, don't worry, God did it for me, he'll do it for you. I'm saying I'm exactly where you are and I'm still waiting just like you're waiting. 
But guess what? While I'm in my pit experience, I'm like, okay, okay, I had my moment there in the car where I I had my moment. But check what God tells me while I'm busy fighting with him in the car. Psalm 43. He says, what are you asking me now, brother? Kind of like, remember what he told Job when he said, hey, bro, where were you when I made the stars and the moon and the sun? Don't ask me rubbish. I'm there, I'm with you this whole to relax. We're going somewhere with us. Stay focused. Keep calm. Keep tithing. Keep doing what you're supposed to do. Don't I life. Then you backslide. That's not going to help anyone. I'm going to find you three, four years down the line when I'm finally driving my dream car and I'm living in my house and I'm not struggling to pay my bills. And you're going to, then I'm going to find you somewhere. You're going to say, ah, no, like me, bro, sure. And you're all in the bottle, yeah, because now you're bound to show me now that you backslid or something happened. And God will come through for me. He will. So God shows me this and he says, look here. He says, vindicate me, my God. And I plead my cause against the unfaithful nation. Rescue me from those who are deceitful and weak, wicked. And you are, you are God, my stronghold. Why have you rejected me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? Send me your light. Remember, we're speaking about light and being the light of God. Now, you are in Psalm 43. This guy is in the same position where I was when I was fighting with God in the car. And there's nothing wrong. God says, remind me of my promises. Tell me, tell me, tell me, hey, God, come on, bro. You promised me what's going on. You need to make a plan here now. Because that's how I speak to that. When I go in, the, in my room and I say, there, that's bull. What's happening here? This is, well, now I'm serious, what's happening here? Because I'm struggling. And you're my father. You're supposed to help me. Switch on, dude. You need to help me. And guess what? He comes through. Now check what, check what happens here in Psalms. It says, send me your light and your faithful care. Tell them to lead me. Let them bring me to the holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. Then I will go to the altar of God. To God, my joy and my delight. I will praise you. Oh God, my God. Why so downcast, oh my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him. My Savior and my Lord. Then God gave me the psalm to him. He says, okay. You're struggling, you're going through the pains, and you're going through the hardship. And I'm saying to him, why so downcast, oh my soul? Why am I struggling? Why am I fighting? Why am I? And I said, okay, this situation is too big for me to control. I'm going to take it, I'm going to put it in your hands. I'm going to take it and I'm going to say, this is completely out of my control. I can't afford it. I don't get paid that much. I don't, just take it. What started happening was this. He reminded me of another scripture, and I would like to share it with you. It's Isaiah 34, 38. Hezekiah, he says it like this. He says, in those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, this is what the Lord said. Put your house in order because you are going to die and will not recover. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Same thing I did in the car. Remember me, Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully with a wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Now listen, this is what I want to tell everyone here this morning. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. Go and tell Hezekiah. This is what the Lord, the God of the father of David says. Listen. I have heard your prayers. I have seen your tears. I will add 15 years 
to your life. And I will deliver you from the city, from the hand of the king. Is there whatever the name is? I will defend the city. This is the Lord's sign to you that the Lord will do what he has promised. So it's what you're saying. I'm saying, be the light of God. Be the light in the darkness. Six, but you don't understand. No, I'm going through this. Guess what? We all go through that. Back to the text. Your Joseph's dreams came true. Joseph came and he was in the house and he became second in command. Remember, we read there that nothing happened without Joseph say so. And by this point, his brothers have sold him into slavery. They don't even remember what he looks like anymore. By this point, he has this whole thing on his head and he has this Egyptian makeup. You've seen the movies, how they do in Egypt and where they have that like wig and then they have that makeup that curls like this. Sometimes the girls like to do it like that cat, whatever. And Joseph has his makeup on and he has his, he has his outfit on and whatever. And, and there's famine in the land just as he has dreamt. And there's famine in the land and things are going bad. And, and guess what? He told the king, he told him, guys, look here, there's going to come seven years of famine, but there's going to come also good years. And I want us to store up all the grain in the stars so when things go wrong guess what God will supply for us when things go wrong what is Joseph saying Joseph is saying keep bringing your tithe into the storehouse keep giving into the household of God keep being the light of God keep doing what is right we just read now where Jesus says I've seen your tears I've heard your prayers after after this guy has been complaining oh God I've been praying I've been walking faithful in your way and in your eyes and in your sight he says I've seen it he's Joseph is saying let's just store up all the grain let's do what's right and guess what happens? He dreamt this thing how many years ago? And eventually there's famine in his father's land. Remember he dreamt in the beginning that their grains were bowing before his grains. And that their stars were bowing before his stars. And there's famine in the land, but now he's the big chief. He's the big boss. Nothing happens without him saying so. That same little boy that was in that pit. That same little boy that was a slave walking with that caravan back to the palace. That same little boy that got deceived and lied upon and got trampled upon and went to prison and went struggling there and went crying in a car. God, when are you going? My car is broken. No, no, no. That same boy, the same guy, he kept faithful. He kept focused. He kept pushing. He kept doing what he had to. He kept the light of God on his face. He kept pushing. He kept fighting. He kept going through. Yes, you lied about me. I never even touched your wife, bro. But now I'm throwing in jail for something. I think it's fine. It's okay. I'll turn the jail into a house of praise. I'll allow this light to follow me wherever I go. Yes, you people, you sold me into slavery. My own brothers, I thought you had my back. It's okay, James. Don't worry about it. Because you see, everything that's, that, that Jesus takes you through, that God takes you through, is for your setup. If they never sold him to slavery, never be second in command in the palace. He'd never be in charge in the palace. They had to sell him through slavery. They had to throw him in the hole. He had to go through that whole cycle before he ended up in the palace. You see, what you're going through now is a necessity. It has to happen. You must struggle. Your car must break down. You must come short on your bills at the end of a month. Why? Because God is saying, this is out of your control. Give to me. Let me sort out. He's trying to teach you something. The more you keep yourself clever, ah, I got this, I know what I'm doing, I'm going to spend my money somewhere else. I, got my, I don't even have enough money to pay tithes. That's the same thing that happened to me. After all the deductions, there wasn't even money for tithes. Until I told him, okay, make a plan. And so he comes, famine in his father's land. His father says, okay, go there to Egypt. Go there uh, to the palace and go ask them, hey guys, don't you have, you know, grain or something? Because we heard they by the palace, things are going okay. So go there and go borrow some grain. Or, you know, go and buy some grain. Go do something because their storehouse is overflowing. So his brothers come in. They're probably waiting in a long line. It's busy handing out parcels. Okay, God bless you, amen. Here's your parcel. The people go. Their grain sorted out. Not a bag. Give to so-and-so. As they're busy giving out, he recognizes his name. Isn't it? Oh. I must not know those odds. Amen. This is... And he steps back and owns a busy handing out grain. And he steps back. His brothers come. And his brothers are all in front of him. But now remember, he's not the same boy that was crying in the pit. He's long not the same boy that's laying in prison. No, long ago. He has makeup on now. He's, 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 he's on point now. 
He's doing what he's got to do. I don't know how they're saying he's stealing the palace money because God is now blessing him. You know what's how it is. It's a joke. If it goes over your head, unfortunately, sorry. He's stealing the palace money. He's licking the prince's bums or whatever. But he's now, he's, he's now he's in charge now. He's the big boss now. So his brothers come and he's standing there and he's like, so gents, where are you from? And they don't recognize him. They're like, no, no, we're from our father's place. And we came here and we're coming to, please, king, we're just coming to borrow some grain, please. Because, you know, it's famine. Blah, blah, blah. Now he's, God, he's reminded of what God promised him there. It's okay, gents, listen. I want you all to bow. There's no money at home. There's no, they must bow. They don't have, they can't say, nah, right, leave, we we'll go find somewhere else. There's no way else. They must come to the source of the light. They must come back to the light. There's no way else to go. It's dark here outside. Here's the light. They can't say, nah, I'll go find other place. They must bow. James, listen. I'll give you grain. Bow. No, no problem, king. No, because they don't know it's him. No problem, king. They bow. They bow. Ah, great thing. He says, okay, now listen, I'm going to give you grain, but where's your father? He says, nene, is at home. He says, okay, go and fetch him. Come back. Come back with the father. He says, okay, James, listen. All of you now. He says, remember the dream said, even the parents must bow. He says, all of you bow. Amma, they bow. Bible says at this point, Joseph could no longer contain himself. They couldn't recognize him. They didn't know it was him. He couldn't keep it in anymore. He started crying. He started going back. The Bible says he went back. He wiped his makeup off to get wig off through it there. He came back and said, you can stand up, guys. They all stood up. Don't see why. No, King, no. We just want grain, please. Look properly, gents. Can you see who this is? No, king, please, we just want grain. He says, listen, the Bible says they're here to tell them. That same, that same lighty. I never had money to pay my bills the other day. And that same guy that was struggling the other day. And that same guy, it's not over until God says it's over. And that same guy that kept pushing. And that same guy that kept fighting. And that same guy that kept struggling. And that same guy, and they say, guys, he takes off his wig, takes off his makeup, and he says, I'm Joseph. They're like, oh. Doesn't matter what you're going through. You have to keep doing what's right. It's festive now. Keep bringing your tithes. January, when everyone's broke, you keep bringing. You keep giving to the, to, to the... You keep, just keep doing what you have to do. And there will come a day where you're going to... Those people that used to mock and say, yeah, you're going to church, they're eating your money, they're at church, yeah, 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 yeah. They're going to come to your company one day with their CVs. And they're going to say, please, sir, can I just have a joke? And you're going to say, she's going to get a big smile on your face. <laughs> you don't remember how I used to struggle. I used to drive a broken golfy key or whatever. God came through for me. I want to tell somebody it's not over. Until God says, until he blesses you.